Look how pretty Ash County is. The land's beautiful. It's a beautiful place to live. There's like, what, 90% of the country songs talk about. Ash County has probably some of the best people in the world. A lot of people around Ash will give you the shirt off her back. Super people. I'm proud to have grown up here. I love this job. I'm protecting the good citizens from the people that's breaking the law. It's real life out here. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do everything I can, and I'll leave the rest up to God. County to 118, possible domestic in progress. Females advising she is being threatened with a gun. A lady grabbed her daughter and ran out of the house. Apparently, her boyfriend got into an argument. He pulled out a rifle and told him that he was going to kill her. in fear, waiting on the side of the road. Hello. How are you? Good. Okay, so what happened was, you pushed me down the bank and I said, that's the last time you're gonna do that. I said, you're not gonna put your hands on me no more, especially in front of her. I said, and he said, okay, well that's fine. He went to the bathroom and got a gun and he pulled it on both of me and her and then put it up against the back of my head. So he pulled the gun at your head? Yeah, he put it at the back of my head with Clark. her in my arms. So if I get another officer to give you a ride to take out, take out warrants on him and I go up there arrest him, will you go down there and swear the warrants out? Yes, I will. Okay. Deputies arrive at the trailer park where they believe their suspect's hiding. Joe, it's the Sheriff's Department. Come out and talk. There's no really great way to go about searching a house. Going expecting the worst. We know this guy's armed. Joey! Joe, you better come to the door now. If you're in here, you better sound off. Who do you think it might be? Joey, it's the Sheriff's Department. Check the closet right there. You better come out now. You better come out now, dude. You know, when somebody's in their arms, uh, it's extremely dangerous for any officer. You're never not cautious in this job. Joey, you better come out now. Is that him? You better come out now, Joey. Joey! Put your closet in, in here. here. Yeah, something fell in the closet, so I was pretty excited. When you're clearing the house, something falls on you, you do think it's somebody. He was here 10 minutes ago. I bet he's at one of the neighbors. Hello, you seen Joe? He was at his truck a minute ago. No, I just got back from Dollar Tree. Okay. All right. You wanna go talk to him? I'll take it back. You know, uh, Joe's there's a new trailer right yeah, here. Yeah, I know him too. Yeah. And he's not here? No, nah, he was over here early when he went back over there. Is there any problem with you if we come in and just look? No. Nah. Joey, if you're in here, you better come out. Huh? He went back across the wet way to walk go. This guy just was something right about him. I could tell he's kind of feeding us a load of crap. If you do inevitably get away from me, we'll come get you again. Eventually, we'll catch you. While deputies in Ash County continue their manhunt, across the mountains in Sullivan County, Deputy Josh Newberry is pursuing a suspect of a different breed. 471. 471. Donkey's back in the roadway, Huffman Hill and Piney Flats. 10-4. Right now I'm assigned to work Donkey Patrol. Stupid okay. Donkey. Uh, if you would, contact Animal Control and see if they can give us any kind of assistance or maybe have an idea of what we do reference that donkey. 
It's a donkey had gotten loose. Apparently he is running down the road uh, trying to locate an owner. And speak of the devil, there he is. 471. 471. I'll be 1097 out here with the donkey. Pony Flats, Huffman Hill Road. And he's mean. He charged my uh, car earlier. No respect. Field going towards the cattle. Oh. oh no. As long as it doesn't go near the train tracks. Didn't get uh, much training on a uh, donkey corralling uh, at the academy. He's jumped into uh, a neighboring field here, which he doesn't belong. Seems to be pretty content for now. Hopefully, he'll stay in. He doesn't have a good history of staying in, so. Right now, our dispatch is trying to get a hold of the county agriculture department, see if they can come out here and take this donkey. Hopefully it's tired. Take a nap. Now, today was my first donkey corral. Went pretty successful, I think. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the county, deputies have issued an arrest warrant for Edith Van Zandt, a frequent offender they know well. Previously convicted of theft, shoplifting, and aggravated burglary, today she may have added Grand Theft Auto to the list. Deputy Travis Jackson is on the case. Right now, a caller wants to meet up with us. He's saying that he might have a location on the female that we've got arrest warrants on. In addition to car theft, Edith is also wanted for violating a court order. Hello. What do you got going on? Well, I reported this morning uh, they found my car parked here. The lady who borrowed my car on Monday night. This is the she kept Edith, right? Today. How'd you find out that the car was down here? Well, she called me and told me if I wanted my car to get down here to get it. She is in this wow. little red brick house up here. Well, she let's go ahead and go up there then, if they're up there. Apparently, with his issue, she stole his car earlier, or at least went joyriding with it. The other officers will probably take out charges on that issue. So we're just gonna handle the arrest warrant issue now. Office, get here, you need to say so. She is 
in this wow. little red brick house up here. Well, let's go ahead and go up there then, if they're up there. Sullivan County officers are attempting to serve a warrant on Edith Van Sant, a habitual thief wanted for violating a court order. Is it open or unlocked? Oh, it's completely open. Sheriff's office, if you're in here, you need to say so. Watch him stay up. This one's locked, looks like. Yeah. Dead end. This search comes to a halt. We had suspicion to believe that they were inside. They just wouldn't come to the door. For now, the search for Edith Van Zandt suspended, but Deputy Jackson's not giving up. Back in Ash County, Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins is still on his manhunt for a suspect accused of threatening his wife with a gun. Now armed with a warrant, Hoppy's ready to make an arrest if he can find him. Oh crap, I didn't... Oh lordy, please tell me which happens they can't go. Oh, this ain't funny. Oh, Betsy. Man can't serve warrants with dry lips. trying to find the guy that pointed a gun at his wife's head. While the female was taking out warrants on the guy, the guy we're looking for called his mother-in-law and said he was gonna kill himself. He may just be calling and saying that to that girl, trying to get her not to take out warrants on him. Say, if you take out warrants on me, I'm gonna kill myself. We see that all the time. Using the number provided by the mother-in-law, Hoppy tries to contact the suspect. Hey, is it Joey? Hey, bud, who am I speaking with? Roger, my name's Deputy Hopkins. I'm just trying to get up with Joey. Do you know where he's at? Are you the guy we talked to earlier? I just need to find Joey and make sure he's okay. He's calling and apparently said he wanted to hurt himself, so I gotta check on him. Is Joey right there beside you? Well, can you hand him the phone? You're about to leave. Are you gonna take Joey with you? You are? So you gonna take him and run from us? He's giving me the run around. He knows where this guy's at. Can't stand when people lie to him. 118, can I get me back out on the trailer park? 118. Old man's truck's gone. And that damn blue truck's gone. Usually, most people that run, they come back to what they're used to. But Hoppy doesn't have time to wait. Subjects advised that he was assaulted. Okay, you got any description on the guy walking? Dark clothes and a young male about 16 years old. 118 coming. Be out there, isn't it? Going safe, County. Thank you, Craig. What's up, buddy? You the one to call? What's going on? Uh, that little. I was sitting over at the seat. He was sticking his finger up at me down there at that house. I don't bother nobody. Okay. Who's he? He come by and I said, Why are you sticking your finger up at me first on out of the box? He said, I whipped your goddamn ass, you old you can lay that cane down. I got up. He said he's gonna beat my ass when I got up. I dropped my cane. That's when he kicked. He kicked it right here real hard. Uh, you want no rest? Oh, he wants to get karate. He's an expert in karate. I said, come on, I'll show you what, I'll show you what karate's about. Who's he? The old red is He sells no black crazy down here, man. You got any idea where he he went? He went that way. In that house? Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, get out here and talk. Are you Jacob? Hey, yes, sir. Well, get out here and talk to me right now. Come to the door. I'm going to kick it in. Yes, sir. Come here now. Yes, sir. Turn around. Well, hey, what is, what Turn is this around. for? Turn around. What is this for? I ain't doing Watch nothing to you. What am I doing? What have I done? Will you please answer my... Hey, Dad! Dad! Listen, push your mouth. I'm not going to listen to you cuss, okay? Hey, bro, you're breaking my wrist. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Come here now. Yes, sir. Turn around. Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins is arresting a teenager who allegedly assaulted an elderly man. Dad. When suddenly, things turn physical. Okay. Hey, bro, you're breaking my hey, wrist. God hey, damn. Hey, easy. Ow, wrist. God damn. I wasn't doing nothing. Oh, do not buck up on me. Do you understand that? I wasn't trying to buck up. Oh, now you get to go to jail for resist. Oh, oh. Oh, you just about broke my ribs. When officers show up at your door, it might do some good uh, treatment with respect. Why am I going to jail, sir? For kicking the man down there. Which man? No, no, no. I, can I explain to you what happened I'll there? I'll talk to you in the car. Yeah, you haven't even heard my story. I didn't mean for all that to happen right there. So I'm really going to jail. Well, yeah. What the f I was walking down the road, chilling, listening to music, fixing to go meet a friend. And then he's sitting there. He asked me a question, and I walk over there. And he asked me why I flipped him off. I said, I didn't flip you off. And he started reaching in his pocket. He was an army veteran, and I thought he was pulling a pistol. Like this, I was like, uh-uh. And that's just the type of person I am. I've had a gun pulled on me before. And I kicked him inside. Then I, I walked back home. Then here y'all was. This first. They're just a bunch of old people, and I guess they just don't like my thug life, kind of. Did you ever consider getting back in school, bud? I tried to, they wouldn't let me. Why don't you try getting your GED? I've been thinking about it. It's just been trouble right now, like trying to think where to sleep. I don't live like a regular kid's life. Like I hustle every day. I don't know where I'm sleeping every night. I gotta find a way to eat. None of this is personal, but you want better for yourself, ma'am? I do, but... But what? You don't care about your life? You're going down a bad path, dude. Yeah, I know. You're capable of achieving better, man. I ain't mad at you. This is my job. If you set in your head to succeed at what you want to do, nobody can take that from you, man. Yeah. That kid charged him with assault on an elderly person, charged him with assault on me, and then uh, resisting a public officer. Maybe that kid will start doing better with his life. You know, if he'll straighten up, he could probably go hang out with the guy that he kicked and probably uh, learn a lot of uh, valuable life lessons from him. So. It's a new day in Sullivan County and deputies are still on the hunt for Edith Van Sant, a repeat offender wanted for violating a court order. It's been a few days, but we got a location on Edith Van Zandt. Now, Deputy Travis Jackson is turning up the heat. Since she wants to be difficult and not cooperate with authorities, then we're gonna go up here and check again since it's been a little bit. And if she's there, then go ahead and see if we can serve that warrant. We didn't see anything out of the ordinary, so we're gonna just keep a good eye on it and check back here in a little bit, possibly under the cover of darkness, so if we do have to approach the house, it'll be better. Suddenly, Jackson's game plan is interrupted. Missing juvenile. Mother's advising the boy was seen 20 minutes ago feeding his animals. It's a call Jackson fears most, a lost child. We had been called out on a 
a missing child. A 12-year-old boy, his mother said that he had went in the back to feed his cats. And I went out there to check on him, and he, was, he wasn't there, and I screamed and hollered for him. He wouldn't ask me, and that's when I said, honey, he's gone. Where's that my baby at? I'm going to go speak with a couple of your neighbors, but if you think of anything, you just let the officers that are here know. Just hold on. We'll, we'll find him. We start with the house to make sure he's not hiding in the house or anything, because the parents said that he had hid in the house before. Then we branched out from there with the neighborhood helping out and betters our chances that we can find him. You haven't seen him in the backyard at all? I just come up through here and ask these guys, because they got a little one too, but they're not home. Is there any other larger bodies of water? Or rivers they're over or by the park. There he is. Well, in cases like this, you never want to think that the worst would happen. Time is crucial. They can go ahead and start the Amber Alert. The quicker we get it out there, just in case. We're getting the information to go ahead and start an Amber Alert on the, you know, for the incident case that he was picked up or abducted. There's a few officers on the scene. We're looking everywhere we can. We have a image that we have to be strong for, but when a, when a child's involved, that's just, that's worst case scenario for us. Just hold on, we'll, we'll find him. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Travis Jackson is leading a search for a missing child. Is there any other larger bodies of water? Or rivers? They're over by the park. There he is. When a child's involved, that's worst case scenario for us. Suddenly, officers spot the boy in the distance. Last I saw him, he just ran by right here. Yeah, he's back at your house. Yeah, he's he's at the house. What's your point? He just looked a little scared. I didn't know what happened to you. I didn't know if somebody snatched you or what. You care to talk to me for just a second? Can you tell me your doggy's name? Kishi. Kishi? Would it be okay if I give Kishi a bone? Yeah. I'll lay it down down here for you. What do you think of my badge? Cool. You like it? What if I was to give you one of your very own? Mm -hmm. so great. Yeah. Would you hang on to it for me? Thank you. Well, you're welcome. If you need anything from us, I sure appreciate it. God bless yeah. you all so much. I didn't know what happened to my baby. I find it very satisfying that we found him as quick as we did. Good job, guys. All of the terrible things that could happen, it, it's just this worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. See you. This call ends without incident. Over in Ash County, <laughs> Deputy Joe Francis is hoping for a similar outcome. We've got a 1050 PI, which is a wreck with injuries. I should be coming up on it any minute. Francis immediately heads over to question the driver. Oh, good to you. What happened? I thought you turned the car the sign to slow. Okay. I was stopping my traffic and the lady in front of this red car right here stopped and the red car tried to stop but it screeched and he couldn't make it in time. And he just plowed right into her. Okay. You got any drugs or anything in here? 
You give a check. Just step in front of the car. Right? finds no drugs. Okay. But Francis runs a background check on the driver. 15 County, check 29. He ain't got no warrants on him. His record's clear. He going to jail. But he wasn't alone. Francis discovers there was a passenger in the vehicle, but he fled the scene, and there's a warrant out for his arrest. Fifteen can. I'm right now on the scene of ten fifty. I'll be looking for him. Can't be out with him. Bingo. We got warrants on him. What are you doing, Dakota? Keep your hands out of your pockets. Where are you going? Okay, put your hands behind your back. Why are you leaving the scene of an accident? Are you drunk? No, I'm not drunk. Then why'd you take off? Oh, Why'd you panic? Uh, Xanax. He hides from us a lot. He's a repeat offender. Uh, we've always got warrants on him. He's usually hard to find. I'm taking him to jail for the warrants. And I also found Xanax on him. Have one warrant out on him out of another county, failed to appear. We had a child support warrant on him, then also took a warrant on him for the possession of the drugs. Possession of Xanax, the court date only is April the 9th. Nice. So you got a lot of court dates to remember. She's gonna set another bomb for the Watauga and everything else. The one that walked away is the one we was looking for. Back in Sullivan County, darkness sets in. It's time for Deputy Jackson to move in on his fugitive, Edith Van Zandt, a known thief wanted for violating a court order. We've been going back, driving by the residence a few different times, and we're just gonna go over here and drive by it again, see if we can see anything new, see if she can possibly tell if she's home. If we do make contact with anybody there, of course, you know, we're gonna check anybody else that's there because if they're at the residence, then obviously they're gonna know who she is. So hopefully we'll come up with Edith herself, but it's just right up here, so we're gonna see if she's home. As Jackson approaches the residence, he spots a suspicious vehicle in the driveway. Oh, you got it. Uh, it's a vehicle in the driveway we've been looking for. You, Edith, go ahead and step on out. 341 to 184. What you got? It's a vehicle in the driveway that we've been looking for. You, Edith, go ahead and step on out. After days of searching, Sullivan County Deputy Travis Jackson has finally found his fugitive, Edith Van Sant. All right, anybody else out here with you? Yeah, I'm a brother. Where's the driver? He's in the house. All right, just when you get out here, put your hands on. <laughs> you ain't got nothing on you? There ain't no big match. Go ahead and put your hands on me. Love you, Timmy! Right, me, okay? Come on. Any 
you ain't got nothing on you that I missed. Dude. No. The reason I say if you got anything on you that I missed, you take it in the jail, it's found. No. Go ahead, nurse. With Edith Van Sant in custody, Jackson runs a background check on her boyfriend and mother. Hey, man, you ain't got an ID on you, do you? Ma'am, do you have an ID on you? Have you ever been in any trouble? In... What kind of trouble? Caught me on gravel. The gravel. 341. Dispatch confirms the boyfriends wanted in Virginia. Stand for it. Just confirm again. We'll extradite. All right, man. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Did you know that you had the warrant through Wise County? Love you. I'll write you, okay? What's the matter? Really? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Just when you get up there and you talk to the judge, just be honest with them and tell them what's going on with you. That'll help. I'm not saying it'll fix everything, but that'll that'll help. What was your original charges? Theft over ten grand. What'd you steal? Twenty-two pieces of jewelry. I don't even remember stealing it. I had, I had took some Xanaxes, like a lot. So I don't steal them until I take those. I don't steal at all. I told my mom, I said, I'm allergic to Xanaxes. Every time I take them, I break out in handcuffs. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> We were doing a drive-by of a residence. It's right over here. I just happened to see the vehicle. They were still in it. They had even said that they were just there for moments. Then they were immediately leaving and going somewhere else. It's being exactly where you need to be at exactly the right time. And that's just, that's God at work right there. Nope, I sure can. Yeah, you're good. Case closed. But over on the other side of the county, a new emergency arises. Right now we're en route to a uh, 911 hang-up call. Uh, what that is is somebody has, uh, from that residence has called 911. And when our dispatchers answered the phone, there wasn't nobody there. It could be phone trouble, or it could be something going on. It could be an actual emergency. With limited intel, deputies prepare for the worst. How you doing? Hello, fine, how are you? Everything okay here? The only reason I'm asking is because we got a 911 call from this address. Boy, come here. I'm so sorry. They have What's brought the police out here. Look at all these police officers out here. Did you all call 911? They thought something was going on. They thought something bad had happened. What's your name, buddy? Hayden. Hayden? Hayden, we're here to help you. If you call 911, that means you need help. That's why we're here. We thought you needed help because you called 911. You stay right here. I'll be right back. I might have something, okay? Hang on. Be right back. This is his birthday. Today your birthday? <laughs> and you're calling 911? He gonna give you a birthday present. I got something for both of them. Okay? Who's who called I'm so us? Sorry. Alright, you're the mother. <laughs> you're the one. And there's kids out here that unfortunately see things they shouldn't or are involved in something that they shouldn't be involved in. And you know, just the little things you know we can do, give them a little badge or a stuffed animal can make a world of difference. Be a good boy, okay? 
All right, y'all have a good night. I'm so sorry, y'all. It's okay. I apologize. <laughs> Glad everything's okay. Yeah, thank It's you. not okay to call 911 unless you have an emergency. But at the same time, we'll let them know we're, we're there if you do need us. Well, when we run into children, we don't want children to be afraid of us. We want to be their friends and want them to be our friends because they are our future. Both units 10 and 8, 10 and 8, everything's 10-4. There's a small child playing with the phone. It's nearing the end of a long night for Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins. But before he turns in, he makes one last attempt to locate his fugitive. I tried to uh, hook this guy up right quick. Stuck a gun to his wife's head while she had a little baby. That guy just got out of jail two weeks ago. Apparently, he assaulted one of the jailers while he was in there. We'll be as safe as we can about it, considering he's supposed to be armed. We're going to see if we can't sneak up on him while he's in the bed. 118 County. All units going back out, 16 North, Trail Park. Rev 29. Hoppy's joined by deputies Chris Roden and James McNeil. Joey! There's several lots of Joey, it's Sheriff's Department, open the door! Open the door, Joey. Joey, I can see you. I'm coming in. You see him? You see your hands. Put both of them up. Now! Joey, it's Sheriff's Department. Open the door. Ash County deputies are closing in on a fugitive accused of threatening his wife and child with a gun. Open the door, Joey. Joey, I can see you. I'm coming in. You see him? Let me see your hands. Put both of them up. Now! Get your hands on your back. Where's his gun at? There's no gun. She just make all that up. She kind of did on that one. Ain't nobody a cigarette, dude. No. Come on. Oh. 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 Dude, nice spot. <laughs> Hoppy's manhunt is finally over. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. The suspect will soon face a judge and a series of charges. Assault by pointing a gun, assault on a female. It's stupid. I ain't got no gun. Brother, I didn't charge you with it. She did. She went up to him, ash it, and swore on the Bible. Oh, that warrant service right there was selling justice to a T. Everything fell into place. Got somebody off the street that had a warrant on them. Yeah, Good luck to you, buddy. See you. Most, if not almost all, people that are arrested are repeat offenders. It's a vicious cycle, but it can be broken. And Hoppy knows the best way to end the cycle is to stop it before it starts. Tonight, Back on the clock, Hoppy may get that chance. Caller said that his brother was uh, throwing stuff, that he'd already broken a bunch of stuff in the house, and he'd already broke the porch. He said it's a mobile home park, and you know, we always seem to stay pretty busy around with those just because 
the close quarters of uh, the people that live there. What's up, bud? He causing trouble. Why are you causing trouble? Just mad. My mom. What's wrong? Why are you mad at your mom? We're just not getting along with her. Okay. Did you got anything on your pockets? No. I'll check them. Okay, sorry. Where's your mom at? Okay, how old are you? 14. 14? And your mom's good enough to give you food and a roof over your head? Did you do this? Well, that was pretty ridiculous, wasn't it? Hello. What's going on tonight? What are y'all mad about? I just wanted to buy them. She didn't give it to me, and then we've been fighting over it. Who's she? My mom. I'd say she's probably doing the best she can, ain't she? I guess, yeah. I mean, he's 14. Charged him as a juvenile for damage to property. You don't want to start getting charged with a minor already, do you? And then being the system. If you get charged with a minor, then it's going to carry over. And it's going to be a big mess. You know, your family's good enough to provide you a home and food and clothes. You probably shouldn't act like that. A lot of people don't have that, especially a lot of people I deal with. You're 14, you're, you know, getting close to being an adult. You should have uh, enough sense and enough decency and respect for your mom not to do stuff like that. Not, not to mention you got little ones here and you start setting an example as a man for them. If he gives you any more trouble tonight, I'll just take out a petition and arrest him, and then uh, we'll send him to boarding school or something. All right, well, y'all have a better night, okay? What's the deal? Why are you acting out like this? Let's talk about it. I got a minute. I'll help you. She just wants to watch a TV show. She never wants to do anything. Okay. And that frustrates you, right? Yeah. Listen, man, you got to stay out of the system, so... You can be a productive member of society. What do you want to do with your life? I want to be a carpenter or yeah. a mason. Okay. Well, carpenters, uh, a good career. There's a lot of good carpenters around here. If you keep getting in trouble, nobody's going to hire you because they think you're going to be a troublemaker. Let's figure this out. I know how it is to be 14. I know how it is to be stressed. But, man, you got dirt all over the freaking walkway, and you got three little kids in there. All right. You playing sports? Soccer. Are you good? Yeah. All right, well, next time you get mad, why don't you come out here and work on soccer or something, man? I'm Deputy Hopkins. I'm Jacob. All right. You want to do me sir. a favor? Yeah. How about let's clean this up? Okay. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Listen, man, if you get mad, I don't know. Uh, do, you, do you believe in God? Yeah. Pray about it, man. He'll help you through stuff. You got a Bible? Yeah. All right, read it, man. I don't think you're a bad dude. I think it's just a tough situation for everybody. The older you get, the more opportunity you have, and you can do what you want and better yourself. Cool? Yeah. All right, bud. If you need anything, I'm Deputy Hawkins. I work all night, okay? If you ever just need to call and yell at somebody, I'll listen to you a minute, okay? Thank you. All right, bud. I know what it is to live in an old trailer. And I know what it is financially not to have anything. Hopefully he'll get up tomorrow and say, maybe I'll listen to at least one thing that deputy said. At the end of the day, what law enforcement's about is, uh, you know, helping people. You know, he may turn out to be one of the best carpenters we have in Ash.